Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So this is the constant current load that I have been working on and this will be part 3 in that video series. And we will pick up from where we left last time where we had this sorta kinda working but it started to oscillate if I put too high of a voltage into the input terminal. And if you remember from the previous video I had one op amp controlling all of the MOSFETs and I have three MOSFETs on the heatsink there. And no matter what I did to this value and the capacitors you see across the MOSFETs I couldn't get it stable. I also had one sense wire coming back from the sense resistor and going back into the op amp here. But as you can see now I have removed the sense resistor. And let's take a look at the new schematic so we can see what I'm doing instead. As you saw, I was using two op amps before, and now you can see there's four op amps. So what I'm doing now is that I'm sending a drive signal to each of the three gates of the individual MOSFETs. And I am also getting back a feedback from each of the three MOSFETs, or the three sense resistors, because now I have because now I have arranged it in a configuration so the balance resistor is also the sense resistor. Or in other words I have ditched the balance resistor because I no longer need it because each MOSFET is controlled individually. Now I of course have to combine this somehow so I can get a single reading that I can send to my ADC. And that is what the fourth op amp here is doing. You can see all the feedbacks are coming in through a resistor. This will take the average of the free values and send it to an op amp. And to get the actual current we will have to multiply this value by 3 by setting the gain with these two resistors. But you might remember from the old schematic that I was also adding a gain in the previous configuration. So I can just add those two gains up and set them with the same resistive divider. I also added this capacitor here that I budged in on the previous board. And also another minor detail, I was powering the analog section of the ADC from the digital 5 volts in the previous revision and now I'm taking the analog power from the reference. It's just because that is recommended by the data sheet. And I kind of measured it and it didn't really change that much. But if you want to utilize all 24 bits, I guess you have to do this. But I don't need anywhere near that resolution, so I guess in my case it wouldn't really matter. And just in case you're wondering what is going on here, I'm still taking the deck value and dividing it down, just like I did in the previous schematic. But now I'm just tapping this voltage off here and supplying that to these two op amps as well. But now this value has to be divided by another factor of 3, of course. And to screw it up even more, I now use 0.24 ohm resistors instead of the 0.1 ohm that I used before. I can increase this resistance now because I in theory have all these resistors in parallel. So it will be 3 times 0.24 ohms in parallel and that is actually less than I had before even though I increased the resistance. I have also corrected a little mistake on the PCB itself. You can see these pins over here are bent slightly. And that is because on the Arduinos there are these gaps between the pins and they are not the same size. So I kind of assumed that it would just be one missing pin. So there would be 2.54 millimeters between there. But as you can see, some of the gaps are not as wide as others. So I just corrected that on the new board. And here is just a quick comparison of the two boards. I don't know how easy this will be to see because uh, there's all these wires going across. but. But the main difference is, is that I have an extra op amp on this board and all these extra wires for the gate drive and the feedback 
On this one I only have one of each. And I also suck the deck off of this one and put it onto the new one. And all the rest is pretty much still the same. So I guess what's left now is to see if it actually works. So I will try and plug in this 20 volt battery. Or it is actually an 18 volt. But when it's fully charged there is about 20 volts. So we will do that now. And if you have seen my previous video, the lab tour, I said that I had a few problems with this circuit also. And one of them being that you can see it draws 10 milliamps when it's not turned on. But I can kind of live with that. I would like it to go down to zero, of course, but this is a high power load anyway, so I won't be drawing 10 milliamps with this load. So let's try and set a current. And let's start with 1 amp. And again, I haven't uh, calibrated the deck or anything in this, so it's a bit out. But we're getting 984 milliamps, so that's close enough. And I did calibrate the ADC as good as I could, just by changing the values by eye. And you can see that is pretty close. So we should be dissipating just about 20 watts in this heatsink and they're not even getting warm yet so let's try and up the current a little bit so say 3 amps so now we should be dissipating 60 watts and now they do start to get a bit warm 5 amps and finally 8 amps I'll just do this very quickly because my wires are actually not rated for that but as you can see it it does kind of work so the problem with the previous revision of the board or the circuit here was that the outputs and the gates of the MOSFETs were oscillating when the input voltage was too high or the load was too high so now we have about 20 volts on the input and we're drawing 3 amps and let's try to measure the output of the MOSFETs here and I am at 5 millivolts per division and as you can see there's not much noise at all uh, most of this is actually in the ground lead here and this will stay good all the way up to 8 amps I have tested that but uh, I can only go up to 5 amps for a short amount of time with these wires so here's a shot of that at 5 amps and at 5 amps these MOSFETs are getting very hot of course because we are dissipating 100 watts in these three and that might also be a little bit on the high side because we don't want the MOSFETs to overheat and I have measured it they get over 100 degrees when I'm drawing 5 amps but then again I don't have a fan blowing on here so the heatsink gets pretty warm as well so it would of course help to put a fan on here but still I think 100 degrees Celsius is a bit too warm anyway so I think I will go as far as calling this the final design I can easily live with the few problems that it does have it is a little bit non-linear when you get to higher currents but that is not much and it has this offset so even though you turn the load down to zero it will still draw 10 milliamps but that can only get better when I put it inside the enclosure and solder up all these wires I do not expect it to get perfect but I would kinda expect it to get a little bit better even if it stays at 10 milliamps I can live with that but it would be kinda nice to have it to go down to zero but yeah so I hope you liked this little update video even though there was not much in it I just kinda wanted to document the changes over the previous board so you're not completely lost when we have to go through the software and all that because I haven't finished that yet either I still have to make it save the settings to the EEPROM and all that kinda stuff and make the ramps and variable currents 
I will also have to make a PCB for the display and the buttons down here. I don't know if I will do a video about that, but it should be fairly straightforward. I guess the next step should be to make an enclosure for this. And for that, we will have to take a look at the laser cutter. I will hope to catch you soon for the next one. And as always, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel if you find my videos interesting. Thanks for watching and I will see ya.